Hello everybody and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. Today we're going to be breaking down more aspects of my protein toolkit for Houdini. Today we're going to be talking about amino acids. So I wanted to kind of showcase the amino acids tools that we have going on in Houdini right now um, and how you can work with them to make them successful and what kind of is going on behind the scenes and what makes them accurate and everything like that. Um, so stick with me on this. We're gonna have a lot of fun. So the first thing you do is bring in your protein information and you orient it to the world that you want and I always now that I'm working with this tools kit toolkit and I know how it works um, I always drop down my atomic properties SOP so I can kind of visualize the overall structure of the protein and I can get a good idea of basically what metals kind of exist in it this atomic properties SOP we're gonna break down in another video uh, but I always do it just for sanity's sake to check that all the information coming in is correct. The one thing I do, I'm starting to figure out atomic wise uh, with all the PDB data is that when the PDB data is exported onto the site, um, because it's crystallography, um, it doesn't actually capture all the hydrogen atoms. So with all these structures that we currently work with in Houdini, there's actually no hydrogen atoms in the structure. You can't, there's no real way when we finally get down to our bond SOP and we're talking about, you know, hydrogen and iconic bonds to visualize hydrogen bonding quite just yet because it's kind of impossible to isolate those hydrogen atoms unless you know um, kind of the chemical compounds of each amino acid and then you can kind of guess from there but uh, that will be something that we talk about in a later video. Uh, now back to amino acids. Um, <laughs> let's go to our amino acid SOP. And our amino acid SOP uh, will basically allow us to count uh, the overall atomic count, the total molecule count, uh, the amino acid that we're looking at, and the total atom count per element. So that's pretty awesome. The only reason I've really chosen these five is because they were the most common ones that I was coming across uh, with when I was working with protein data bank information at the very beginning. I'm working on a method to kind of swap these out and kind of make us pick and choose which kind of atoms we would like to, elements we would like to visualize in the structure, but I think um, that's gonna be an improvement coming in the future. Currently, we have two options when visualizing our final structure. And one is to do with these two outputs. So one is our model. But if we go to the second input, um, sorry, outputs, we have our points. And this will allow us to export our points with all the information on it. So temperature vector, van der Waal, any really information coming or groups coming in and being created by the amino acids, HDA. So let's go back to our model. And let's talk about the interface here. So right here, we have the option to isolate certain amino acids within the structure. So if we wanted to click this and go, let's say number five, um, it will isolate these clumps of amino acids over here. We also have options for switching between amino acids, which is up here. So if we click on GLN, um, that amino acid will pop up and it'll be different like that. Um, we also have the option for modeling. So if we take a look at our model now, it's not very high poly. And the way we can kind of make it high poly is if we change the voxel size. So if we change that to 0 0.15, um, these will become more accurate, more round. I, they're almost too big, so we can also scale these down to like 3.4 to kind of see the bonds between them. And you can see that the bonds between them are not accurate, so we have to go in to our connections tab, and we have to figure out how to search in this radius of points um, and make those connections more accurate like this. Sometimes this takes a little bit of finessing, but we can do it. There we go. Um, that's way more accurate. So now we have a model that we kind of like, and now we can also say we want to change the color of those lines so we make them blue. We can do that. And now we can just visualize them in grayscale mode, but also just visualize the bonds between everything. Uh, we can also visualize the elements. So if you want to switch the color on, this will allow us to visualize the elements on those amino acids. So those are pretty cool. And if those colors don't exist, um, the main color will just show. Now let's go to the atom size switcher. And basically this will allow us to set the P scale, customized P scale per atom 
in the structure. So if we wanted to create, um, certain, we wanted certain atoms to appear smaller on our amino acids, what we could do here. Um, so there's an option here for atomic size. So if you wanted to dial in your atomic size or showcase as I've edited here, um, different atoms at different sizes, you can do that as well. So that's kind of a light overview so far of all the different taps, but here's one thing you can do where you can switch to space filling. And what space filling will allow you to do is build space filling diagrams. So these are a lot lighter than using the voxel method, but it allows you to do that there as well. And if we can switch it back, you can see the wireframe underneath. And that's kind of pretty much it for the amino acid SOP. So let's move on to amino acid data. Amino acid data is one of the newer uh, amino acid tools in this toolkit and allows you to look at an amino acid and basically look at the different, you know, data visualizations when it comes to weight. Um, if it's the amino acid is acidic or neutral or basic. And you can also look at the weight and pH levels. So let's kind of do that. Let's turn this visualization method off and all our other ones so it's less confusing. And let's take a look at this one. So let's zoom in here and turn off on my kind of isolators for information. And let's say um, I only really want to work with certain kind of attributes and visualize certain attributes because when you're doing this you will generate a lot of attributes so start deleting what you no don't need so i'm not going to need atomic mass boiling point chain id i don't think for this anymore i'll need it i might not need temperature factor van der wall actually serial number occupancy Melting point probably won't need. Start to clean stuff up that you know for sure um, won't affect your visualization. I also like to start clean, cleaning out any groups for sure I won't need as well. Um, so I'll just add a group delete down here and that will tidy up what I'm looking for. So now if we go down here, we can take a look at everything else. So if we go to the density or da, we can see that the biggest one here is about 2.35 and the dot range over here. Um, I want to see why it's coming up with zero because that's really cool. Um, maybe, just maybe. Nag. Oh, that's a residue. So residues, it currently doesn't work with residues. Um, so I will look into that. But let's try and find the second lowest number just for fun and that's like 75.017 and then we can go over here and get an accurate visualization of that which is pretty cool i'm down so you can see where the residues are because they appear in that purple color they're literally right there so we might have to create a residue kind of visualizer that does the same thing or build in residue visualization options which will probably be in the next build let's go to the uh, amino acid groups. So if we want to look at any basic um, groups, so any amino acid that has is a basic pH. Uh, let's look for any acidic ones. They seem to be in there as well. So we can turn on those as well. Let's look for the neutral ones. There's a lot of neutral um, and polar amino acid groups in there. And then if we can also look at neutral nonpolar. And if there's any unique ones as well, we can add those in visually. So that's pretty cool. And you can also change their color if you want to as well. Weight and pH levels. So let's go and look for any residue weights that are in the structure. We can already see that there are residue weights here and the lowest seems to be, I would say 0.5. Zoom that up to the point here and we have 86.22, which is great. Um, and now, we can turn this on and visualize it accurately. So there we go. Let's look for the acidity. So this visualization should change over time, but let's look at the pK acidity of this. So where is it? We gotta go to pKa up here. 
so it would be 2.83. And let's scroll down here to and one, one point eight two. So now we have a more accurate range of this, which is great. So we can switch that off as well. If you go to the PK base, we'll notice something interesting ha is happening here. So let's go PKB. So the highest here would be 10.28, and the lowest here would probably be 8. 0.8. So now we can look at here and now we've got an, our residues. Now we can look, if we turn off the here, we can do switch or no, PKX I believe means neutral. So we're looking at neutral and these are the PL is the ones that can switch. Um, so if we look at PKX, there is 12.48. And if we scroll down, the lowest one is like, 3.65. So now we can look at that more accurately as well. And then you'd want to do the same thing for your PL switch. So those are something that you can do with this tool. And once again, this has three outputs, one for points. So you can output that point information. One is this model that it creates. So if you want to visualize a color and go like this, it, those color attributes should be passed down through the model, but sometimes they don't like it. It's a little bit sneaky. So it's more built for this. You can also do a uh, color non charity um, and those will be circling around your structure like that. So that's one way you can visualize this as well. Um, if we look at the amino acid types, uh, what this will allow us to do is that the, we can look at sulfur atoms, we can look at polar and nonpolar groups, we can look at proteins for bodily functions as well. Um, there's tons of different things that we can isolate with this. Currently, we're looking at the sulfur atoms, so we can see what part uh, of the structure those sulfur atoms are attached to. And we can also, by scrolling through the groups here, we can do that. Uh, we can also see if they exist in any polar groups or positive amino acids or negatives as well, um, just by doing that. And we can also look at if they exist in any nonpolar groups. And that's kind of the overarching um, thing for this particular setup. If you want to isolate other parts of the structure, you can go non-essential amino acids and that will isolate only the non-essential amino acids of the structure. Once again, it's got outputs for modeling and another output for the points. So I'll leave that up to what you'd like to go and explore with it, but those are some other functions of these amino acids tools and I'll leave you with them and let you have fun. And I will see you in the next video.